Hey there, Sagittarius. It's Angie with Feisty Butterfly Tarot, and we are going to do a read for the end of June for you. We'll do a little tarot here, a little tarot there, maybe an oracle card or two, see what's going on. This is for the end of June for Sagittarians. Sun, Moon, Venus, Jupiter, North Node, whatever. Um, if it doesn't match your sign or doesn't resonate, then check your other signs, see what is going on with that, and take what you want, and hope we have a little bit of fun here. Okay, for the upcoming June 2020, last couple of weeks, endish time. Whoa, all right, there's three right there. I think we'll take that. Hmm. All right, start with that and let's take a little look at the oracle here. Push this out of the way. We'll see what we got here. And this is from the um, Mystical Shaman Oracle. So this one goes out to the Sagittarians and B, if you know who you are, then great thinking of you. Hope you're having a good day. Okay. Little Sagittarians. Wow. Okay, that one stands out first. So we're going to be addressing that one. Wow. All right. All right. So Sagittarius, right now what we're seeing in the middle of everything is the Rainmaker. This is the energies and influences. The Rainmaker. Um, in lots of traditions, the Rainmaker is bringing the money, making it rain, blah, blah, blah. But this is Shaman Rainmaker. Look at this. Gorgeous. I really think about nourishing the land, bringing things into fruition after they've been parched, after they need it bringing needed growth, a cleansing. The council. This is the council of light that's surrounding you. Think guides, angels, spirit guides, ancestors, those kind of folks. They're looking out for you right now. And then this, taming the wind. Man, this is gorgeous. Okay, so if you look close, you'll see a face in here with all the feathers and all the all the pearls and interesting shells and birds coming to be there. Taming the wind. This is a gentleness of spirit that you're supposed to be having. A gentleness. There's a time for cleansing, perhaps crying, and rainmaking, and maybe even profitability. We don't know. Okay, so that's what's going on as the influences for you this month, Sagittarius. Also for you, I am seeing in your current situation, and then this is going to be outside sources. Current situation, I see the Queen of Cups, Ace of Wands, and Six of Swords. So, Queen of Cups is somebody surrounding you who is very loving and supportive energy, nurturing mother type energy, very um, contemplative, thinking a lot, considering things, very good in supportive relationships, very, very emotionally supportive. Ace of Wands, striking out with something new that is a passion, striking out, not as in struck out baseball, but striking out as in starting out, venturing out. Followed up with the Six of Swords, definite venturing out, taking new ideas, new thoughts with you, departing from where you are or where you have been, going forward, possible actual travel coming up. Okay, so that's what's showing about you. This is outside influences. So we have the High Priestess, holy moly, the High Priestess, the Moon, and the Emperor. Crap. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay, the High Priestess, the Moon, and the Emperor. Three major arcana. And this was not set up as organized deck. No, it was like shuffled and riffled and moved. The Emperor, all to do with order, structure, um, being in the seat of your power, the Emperor. The Moon, a time of mixed emotions. There's retrogrades going on this month. A little bit of chaos, a little bit of nuttiness, a little lunacy. 
little bit of um, energies and not a lot of knowledge yet. High Priestess, very mysterious, keeper of knowledge, keeper of secrets, the ones that you know here. And this is the one where you have the mystery and it's not all unfolded yet. These two together are saying mystery, mystery, secrets, things will begin unfolding. I would give this a little bit of time as this is meant for the end of June or the end two weeks of June. Some things might come into your knowledge. So um, not sure what all that's about yet. And the emperor. This queen is very intuitive. Right, right here it's just really, really interesting. Then you have the Ace of Wands, also very fiery energy. I mean, if they were to be paired, I would pair them like this. And then the Moon energy, I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. So if this is representing you and another, which it could be, I mean, who knows? So we'll see. Those are big suckers. All right. Okay. So if we're looking at these in the parallel positions or mirroring each other, taking your leave, erratic emotions, fire, power, new passion, emperor, structure, establishment, sometimes dominance, high priestess, intuitive, secret keeper, very psychic, intuitive, contemplative energies. Let's get a little bit more clear about what all of this is meaning for you. Hmm. Let's go a little old school tarot and see what are some things you need to remember. Because during this time it looks like there's a lot going on. A lot of good positive things and a lot of things influencing your upcoming decisions. Whether this Six of Swords is an actual journey that you're traveling. Or whether this is just, you know... A journey of the heart. I think it's a journey of the head. The magician. Wow, okay. The magician brings a lot of power to this, a lot of power to manifest. This magician is one where he can use all the tools, whether it's fire, air, water, earth, whatever. He's got he's got the goods and he knows how to use it. This is a great time to manifest and put your heart and your intent on anything and really you can bring it forward. Ace of Wands is here for passion. Emperor, the ability to establish rule, reign, um, to execute. Awesome. Okay. We're going to go one more from this. This is the Robin Wood deck. Oh, hello, Robin Wood. So this is an old school Robin Wood deck. If that one wants to stick. Let's flip it. Ooh, King of Swords. Okay. Yeah, a lot on your mind. King of Swords. This is the guy of strategy. He knows what he's doing, knows how to handle it. He's a planner. He makes things happen. Um, not so fiery as like the King of Wands, but definitely he's the one that you want to go into battle with. Clear thinking, established. Air element. And look how firmly his feet are on the ground. He's planted, man. You might have that kind of support around you. I'm going to flip these well, so you can see them a little easier. There you go. All right. Let's call forward one more of the oracles from here, from the shaman deck. Let's we'll see if there's anything else you need to know that's going to be coming up. This next little bit looks good. There's a lot of energy happening. There's a lot of movement energy. This is going to be a busy, potent time. Very potent time. Let's try that one. Ooh, I think we got a double here. Okay, so the lower world and the coyote. Okay, so the lower world is to do with subconscious mystery within looking at things that are um, beneath the surface. I think subterranean. I don't even know why that word comes to mind, but lower world, intuitive. Kind of lower world and higher thinking at the same time. Intuitive, intuitive. 
the coyote comes up. And I think, bam, yes, the coyote comes up. I mean, look at this. Trickster, wise, foxy, crafty, smart, funny, keeps his sense of humor and his wits about him. There might be things that are pulling you and pulling towards you. But really, more and more, this is fire, 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 fire. Like happy, light, good energy. And look at this. Just If you, if you just want to look on color palette alone, which is sometimes an interesting way to, to kind of view what's going on. I mean, holy smokes. I don't know, maybe that one would be here. I don't know. Just, wow. Okay, so if you have the coyote and taming the wind, you're going to prick up your ears, you're going to listen, you're going to pay attention. All right, that's all I got for you. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.